Well, hello there. Welcome to another Tech Tips 411 uh, quick tip series. Today, this is uh, another episode of my Gen 10 Ideas series. So I'm super excited you've joined me today. And today we're going to be talking all about Flipgrid. Flipgrid is probably one of my favorite tools because it's so versatile. It is a student tool. It's not a content specific tool. And there's lots of ways you can use it to engage your learners. So let's go ahead and dive in. If you this is your first time you're tuning into one of my videos, my name is Jennifer Hall and I'm an ed tech, spe ed tech specialist for Atlanta Public Schools. And what that means is I provide technology training for teachers around the district and plan with them to effectively integrate technology. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you're tuning in live, uh, drop your uh, info in the chat that you are here. And if you're watching this in the future, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. <laughs> Hello there, Pamela. Hello, P Abby. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in live. All right, here we go. So the goal for the sessions, uh, these 10 idea series is actually meant to be kind of a quick series, just quick ideas here as well. Uh, look at this, the power of the den. Wanda's here as well. Good to see you, Wanda. Thanks so much for tuning in live. All right, so 10 ideas for using Flipgrid to engage your learners. So I'm going to give you 10 ideas and hopefully uh, it will inspire you with ways that you can use Flipgrid with your learners. So the goal of this session is not for me to explain how to use Flipgrid. It's ways to use Flipgrid. All right. Awesome. So oh, there we go. Another one of my friends there from North Carolina. Good to see you. All right. So idea number one, student introductions. As we're preparing right now for uh, back to school, whether it's virtual or hybrid or whatever that looks like, you're going to want to use Flipgrid as a great way for you to introduce yourself to your students and for them to introduce themselves to you. So I've been working with a number of my schools to create uh, back to school Flipgrids where the teachers are recording messages for their students because this is their first introduction. Um, so uh, definitely the first way to use it is to do that, uh, getting to know the teacher and also sharing that link once the kids uh, get assigned to your class, having them introduce themselves. I've also been using it as a way for me to introduce myself to my teachers. Um, and it's just a great way because you get to be creative. Uh, there's so many new uh, features available in the Flipgrid. If you haven't checked it out, they drop some new features like frames and filters and fonts and text. So you can get really creative with the camera and show your personality. So since we have to be distant from folks, it's at least a great way to connect. So that's the first way you've got to use it is to introduce your students to you and for them to introduce themselves uh, as well. Number two, how about some goal setting? As you start the year off, I know as a former ELA teacher, I used to, you know, we used to plan that first couple of days of school was kind of like goal setting. What do you expect to get from this class? What are, what are your hopes and what, what are you hoping to accomplish this year? How about using Flipgrid for goal setting? And what's really cool is because you can moderate your prompts, your topics, you can have the kids share that with you. So it's a private conversation and then let them be able to go back to it at the end of the year and kind of say, well, what goals did I accomplish? I'm just curious. I'm, I, I'd love to know that. Uh, I see a couple more friends of mine and I've popped in. Uh, Marina, thank you so much for joining me here. I appreciate it. And hello there, Jesse. Good to see you as well. Thanks so much for tuning in live. Awesome. So goal setting, what do you think? It's a great way for you to, to start off the year, say, this is what I hope to accomplish this year. And because it's recorded, they can go back and check in uh, as they accomplish their goals because they can comment on their own videos. Kind of a cool way to use Flipgrid. How about number three? And this is probably the most uh, commonly used way, an explanation of your content, of what you're learning. And so for you as a teacher, it's so powerful. But for your students, now that there's screen recording available, it's your all-in-one tool. So I, I in fact, uh, have been using my... Um, Flipgrid, I created a just ask Jen Flipgrid and people can reply uh, to that prompt and ask me questions. So I had a teacher the other day that was like, I'd like to know how to do X, Y, Z. And my, I was able to record using the screen recording tool and send a message directly back highlighting that information. So you can use it for screen recording and explaining concepts, but how about your students? They pull up their, their content, their presentation that they've created, and they can use the power of screen recording to explain their thinking, explain their thinking in math, science, uh, engineering. Um, so many powerful ways to use it. I've got a health teacher that uses it for health and PE to explain appropriate uh, 
like they were doing like a dribbling task. We did this last year. It was really cool. So they had to be like, this is the appropriate way to dribble. Here's, here's like best practices. So having students explain either their thinking or the proper way to do something is uh, a great way to use Flipgrid. All right, next up, number four, creating a report. So that means for research, you can create a project on any given topic. Now, the one thing about Flipgrid is, is you want to go ahead and gather all of your resources if you want to pre-shoot some video. So maybe they were doing a report on something uh, going on uh, in their local area. So here in Atlanta, we have the Beltline. And so last year I had students that were working on researching the Beltline. And for those that are not in Atlanta, they, that is an area, it's a green space that's been built all the way around the periphery of Atlanta. And so the students were researching how it was impacting near the school. And so they did some reports. So they went out and they shot footage, they took pictures and things like that. So you can bring in other videos and photos into Flipgrid and create that product to create a report. Now, keep in mind that if you're gonna have students gather resources and build out a video, Flipgrid, is, it's got a lot of creativity tools, but it's a one chance to edit. Like you have to upload and edit and produce it and submit it all at once. So if you have students working on a longer pro uh, product, uh, you might want them to use a tool like Adobe Spark to be able to continue working on their editing project and then uploading it to Flipgrid. So we do a little app smashing there and let students create in another product and then put that information on Flipgrid. All right, here's another popular way that teachers are using and that is for SEL. Uh, when we got out, um, suddenly for a quarantine, I had a lot of my teachers who were already connected to their students and they really felt like they were missing that connection. So a lot of my teachers have actually decided that they're going to use it for SEL. So they've got a, a private moderated uh, prompt where students literally can just message the teacher with how they're feeling. Okay. And I think that's really important for students to have that safe space that only the teacher's going to uh, see that and that you can respond. So it can be that ongoing conversation. Again, as a teacher, when you're face to face with your students, it's very easy to stop, uh, you know, stop the kid in the hall and just check in. And we're going to miss that because that's really, that's where you build those relationships. So I definitely think having a dedicated topic that's for, for that SEL component, just like a check in, how you feeling? How's it going? Let me know. Okay. Uh, I got some ideas here. Uh, Jesse says that she has used the emoji stickers or the pixel mode for mystery student of the week. Students give clues to his or her identity and classmates record their guests with evidence. Wow, that is a brilliant idea. And I do love that there is that filtered option or using the stickers, the the looks like Minecraft style, or you can cover your face because a lot of kids are shy and don't want to be on camera. But I love that. Um, that would be a great way to get to know your classmates. Uh, you could also do a uh, three truths and a lie where you have to record a video and then folks have to reply with what they think is the truth, which is the truthful statements and which is the false statement. Yeah, that Jesse, great idea. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's awesome. All right. So what do you think? Idea number five, SEL, having that dedicated topic for students. But guess what? Also, maybe if you're a leader and you're an instructional coach or you're supporting teachers, how about having one of those to support your teachers? Like I said, I created my Just Ask Gen one. I published it. It was for my teachers, but I published it on my website. So I've actually had people that go on my Tech Tips 411 website that have actually messaged me with questions and comments and wanted some feedback on some stuff. So uh, definitely connecting is a great way to do that. And because it's asynchronous, there's a little bit of that comfort level I can record. And because technically a student can record and they can confirm what they want to submit. Um, and so they can feel comfortable with that. All right, number six, book talks. This is probably one of the favorite ways that I've seen as an ELA teacher. I loved this idea. Like my ELA heart just, oh, this is wonderful. Having students talk about the books that they're reading. So one of my champion media specialists actually had a uh, use Flipgrid for students to do come in and record. We created a Flipgrid studio in the media center. We set up a green screen. We had Chromebooks, we had iPads, and kids could come to the media center to record their Flipgrids and they could do really creative things. But she would record their book talks at the end of the week and then posted those. So basically it's, you've got book reviews. So it's a great way for students to talk about the content that they're reading. So I said book talks, but this also would work for any text that you're that you're encountering in your class. So um, you, you could even transition for my my folks that teach, um, you know, CTAE and maybe film production. They could do movie reviews and do it via 
uh, Flipgrid. So there we go. Next idea is for math. And I've seen this used really creatively for math because there's the whiteboard component. And if you're not using the whiteboard component, you're missing out. It's really cool to be able to do that because you can use it on your mobile device and you can actually draw out the problems. Uh, I have some folks um, that I work with, some of my teachers that have ordered these nifty little mouse pens, which uh, allow you to actually write like you're holding a, I got a cup, that one you can't really see. Let me grab this one. Um, you can actually write on the surface of a desktop. And so you can write, so you could actually write out math problems using the annotation drawing feature on Flipgrid. What's really powerful is I saw this done and I'm gonna share this tip. There was a math teacher that went ahead and wrote out the problems and what they wanted to do. And then they did the undo button and got all the way back to the beginning of it. And so that it was a little more seamless in the video. And then they hit record and just hit that redo button. And it was them writing out the math problem and it was really slick. So using the whiteboard is a powerful tool for students uh, talking through their thinking um, on math and other concepts. So I definitely have seen a lot of my math teachers use it. And I wanted to point that out because of that whiteboard. There you go. You're good to go with having students demonstrate their thinking in math. All right. So that's idea number seven. Here we go. Number eight. Newsflash. How about using it to create a little mini news report for what's going on in the school? I've actually had a couple of people I know that are using Flipgrid for their daily news hosting because you can have your video be up to 10 minutes in length. And really most morning news programs were like five minutes ish. You can actually then have a gallery of your daily news for what's going on in the school. And so because you can have students record different videos, you can download those and you can compile them into a little highlight reel and then upload that to your news flash for what's going on in the school, whether it's face to face or virtually. So I definitely think that using it to house your like news is a good idea. Lots of creative choices there. So check it out. Check out that idea if you think you would like to do it. Uh, your either weekly or daily news alerts via Flipgrid. All right, idea number nine, performance tasks. Now this right here opens it up to so many different options. Um, so for example, I had one of my uh, schools that they actually had for their eighth grade, end of the year, eighth grade uh, girls chorus, everyone individually recorded them singing their uh, landslide. And then those videos were all pulled down together and put together as a choral recording of that. So that's how they were able to do it virtually. Uh, for other performance tasks, it's a great way for you, for students to walk through their thinking for art so that they can do, demonstrate their art product that they've created at home and then talk through it um, for dance or band. So for those students that are needing to practice and demonstrate their skills, you can record it. Um, at, uh, when I say performance tasks, I also think of presentations. When I was an ELA teacher, we would spend, you know, three or four weeks working on something and the kids would create these fantastic projects. And then we would spend two to three days of class having kids one by one do their presentation. But what's great is if you have the students do the presentation and demonstration on Flipgrid, you could have your students say, hey, everybody has to go back and give feedback to at least three or four of their classmates. Uh, and now you've got this portfolio of students performance tasks. Uh, just so many options. We actually got to do a really cool task um, when we were back in the real world where um, an AP uh, a Euro history class had were studying um, particular works of art that were housed at the High Museum here in Atlanta. And what was really cool is they studied, they researched, they became experts, they planned a presentation, and then we actually were able to go to the High Museum with permission and the students recorded their presentation standing in front of the works of arts that they had studied um, and directly recorded it into Flipgrid. And that was a really cool real world experience. So once we get back to the real world, or for those of you that are fortunate to get to see your kids in person, such a great way to record what's going on with their performance tasks. And you can have them record in, uh, you know, in spurts uh, using iPads or their phones or whatever, and then take all of those pieces they've recorded to put together for their showcase uh, and upload it into Flipgrid. Uh, so that would be performance tasks. So many options. Any, any other ideas? I've got some folks that are that are tuned in. Any other ideas you want to share? Please drop those in the chat. I'd love to see those. And now idea number 10 is as an exit ticket. This is how you check for understanding. So at the end of a lesson, 
Flipgrid is a great way for you to check for students' understanding because um, you can set the time for 30 seconds up to 10 minutes. But if you really just want a 30 second to one minute response of how are they feeling? What did they learn? What was their takeaway? It's a very easy way to do that using Flipgrid. So that's it. 10 ideas. Pretty quick. I mean, it's kind of like the David Letterman, I'm aging myself, top 10. Uh, this was in no order of importance. It was just 10 ideas that you might want to try. And maybe you got one or two ideas you want to check out. Now, I did want to point out the bonus here is that if you're not quite sure where to start with Flipgrid or you don't want to reinvent the wheel, the discovery library, which is available inside of Flipgrid, you can search by topic, standard, and so forth. So I can go in and search for what I want to talk about. I can actually search and filter down by the subject area um, and get some inspiration um, I, from the discovery library. So you can actually submit a topic you've created and it can become one of those. All right. Uh, Wanda says, love the exit tickets. So important. That's what we got to do is we got to check for understanding. And the other thing is I said exit tickets, but could it... <laughs> Thank, yeah, Jen's 10. Thanks, Pam. Uh, also, it could be an entrance ticket too as well. Like, what do you already know? Tell me what you already know before we encounter this content. That gets into more the flipped uh, concept of like hearing from your students before you plan your lesson. So there we go. Those are the 10 ideas and the bonus tip of making sure you check out the discovery library um, that is available in Flipgrid. So this right here, and I'm going to put the link to this presentation in the in the description. I've got some ideas that are uh, specific to content areas because I have a lot of teachers go, well, how can I use this in math, science, social studies? So these are ways to incorporate video into your subject areas. Language arts, science, math, social studies, foreign language, health, PE, and so forth. So right here, uh, a couple of ideas. So that's going to be in the, uh, the presentation that's going to be linked. So I think you want to definitely want to check that out. Let's see, Jesse says, the library I work with helped me create a flip grid group with topics based on genre. And each genre contained book talks for bo books in that genre. We hung QR codes for access with each genre. That is fantastic. Oh, I love that idea. What a great way to do that. Um, I've also, using the QR codes, if you have not uh, done that, you definitely want to check out using the 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 AR QR codes, because if you can physically be with your students posting those around the room, you can attach them to things to have you pop up and give instructions for students or have your students pop up and give support, which is really, really cool. I love that, that you organized it by genres. That's a great idea. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so very much. Those were our 10 ideas. Any burning questions or comments, please leave them in the chat. Let me know. Hope, let me know if you thought that this was beneficial, if you got at least an idea that was beneficial for you. Let me know in the, in the uh, in the comments and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are uh, watching on YouTube. If you've tuned in via Facebook or Periscope, thank you so much for your time. If you're watching this from the future, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, tune in. I've got ten ways to use Wakelet. Who's going to join me for that? Who wants to learn about ways to use Wakelet? All right, guys, I appreciate your very uh, your time, and I'll begin two o'clock tomorrow. Uh, tune in and I will see you guys then. See you on the next one.